Okay, World Geography, Location and Graphic Tools. This is um, during this section, we'll talk about the different types of globes and maps. And what we'll do is break this into two sections just to kind of keep us under, I think, the 10 or 15 minute for, for YouTube, okay? So, let's get started. Um, World Geography, Location and Geographic Tools. This picture represents a globe. Most of us are familiar with what, what the globes are. The only thing they are just like models of the Earth. They can either be in a, um, a spherical form or more of an egg-shaped cyclical form. And globes are the most accurate way to represent the Earth. And that is just because the Earth is shaped like a circle or shaped more like a basketball or egg form. Okay, So this actually, globes are a close representation of the actual shape of the planet Earth. This next picture represents a map. And what maps are, are just representations of places on paper. So for the purposes of our example, this map is a flat representation of the planet Earth. Maps are more convenient to carry around than globes for obvious reasons. I can fold up a map and put it in my pocket um, 10, 20 years ago before cell phones and smartphones. People used to fold up maps and put them in a glove uh, compartment of their car. It's real hard to carry around the globe, right? So maps are definitely more convenient, definitely more convenient than globes. And people who make maps are called cartographers. Fifteen years ago, cartographers did a lot of their work drawing by hand. Today, it is all by computer. This brings us to map projections. And what map projections are? They're just a way of drawing the Earth, which is round, on a flat surface. There's some problems that occur with this because when you draw the Earth, um, when you transfer information from a three-dimensional object, which is the Earth, to a two-dimensional page, it becomes distorted. So the size, shape, or distance of an area becomes distorted. And we'll take a look at that in the next picture. I'll show you what I mean when I say distorted. This first picture represents... A, a picture that is not distorted take a look at it you guys everything looks to be in place it looks normal the windows the flowers everything looks to be in its proper proportions correct the second picture this represents an image that is distorted or this image has been distorted when comparing them you can see that the um, the walls appear to have caved in the plants are kind of in the wrong place the windows are not quite right. You can tell it's a picture of what it is, but things are not quite right. Well, that is what happens when we attempt to make, whenever we draw a picture of the Earth, which is round on a flat surface. And there are three different basic types of map categories. Uh, the first one is the planar. And what the planar is, just taking a look at this picture, it's just what occurs. It's the type of projection or distortion that occurs when you take a round globe and project it onto a flat map. It's probably the most common one that we're used to seeing. The second one, now you guys, please bear with me as I struggle through pronouncing this word. It's um, cylindrical. Cylindrical. <laughs> this is a cylindrical projection. Um, this is what occurs when you go from having a circular globe and you project it onto like a, a pipe shape. And the, sec and the last type of map projection is called a conic and the thing about a conic is that this is the type of projection that occurs when you take a circular globe and you project it onto an upside down ice cream cone looking th deal right there are basically two different ty types of maps and we'll get into those today uh, the first type of map is called the general purpose map and those are the types of maps that we use every day they show a wide variety or range of general information about an area. Those are the maps that we use 95% of the time when we're looking at a map, either physically, like a map, um, if we on a piece of paper or on our cell phones or GPS or on the computer. Now, the second type of map is called a special purpose map. And these are maps that show specialized information about an area. So it's normally things like population, or economic information about an area that normally 99% of the time we are not using a map for. The first type of map that we'll take a look at or the first type of general purpose map we'll take a look at today is called a political map. 
Now, I know this is an election year and this, it is a presidential election year, but a political map has nothing to do with politics or the way that you would probably think of politics initially. What a political map does, it is a map that reflects the man-made borders on a, a map. So let's take a look at it for an example of it. This is a map of the United States. It reflects all, it shows all of the 50 states. It shows Canada. It shows Mexico. We see Texas. We see Louisiana. We see Me Mexico. We see Canada. These are all man-made unnatural borders. Political maps show all man-made borders. This next picture shows another example of a political map. This is Africa. And in Africa, we see all of these man-made countries, these man-made borders, political borders, um, Algeria, Nigeria, Angola, Tanzania, Ethiopia. We even see Asia appears in this map. So those are what a political map does. It shows the man-made borders, um, political or man-made divisions of countries or regions. This next uh, this picture is just a close-up of a political map of the United States, and it just shows all the 50 states in the United States and Canada. The second type of physical map that, um, the second type of general map that we're going over today is a physical map. And what a physical map does, it shows, it does not show the man-made borders, what it does, it shows the physical, natural features of an area. Things like mountains, oceans, um, major landforms, canyons. And if we take a look at this, you'll see, if you follow the cursor, you'll see the mountains in South America. Those probably look like the Andes Mountains. You'll see the Rocky Mountains in the United States. We'll see the different globes. Um, you, I'm sorry, we'll see the different oceans. We'll see the different formations under the ocean the different reef formations under the oceans you'll see the different deserts and mountain regions all of those things are shown by a physical map and once again the physical map shows the location and shape of physical features different landforms and bodies of water um, on an area and as you can already tell physical maps they use color and shading to show the different um, physical characteristics this is a close-up picture of a physical map of the United States. It shows the different colors reflecting the different areas of vegetation in the southeastern portion of the United States, the Midwestern, and the Pacific United States. The next type of special per um, the next type of map that we'll see is the first type of special purpose map. Actually, it is a relief map, and what relief maps show, if you take a look at this map key. Relief maps show the level of elevation of an area. What does elevation mean when I say that? It just shows how high the land is. So we know, for example, that New Orleans, most of New Orleans is located below sea level, which means that it is lower than the water surrounding it in the ocean. So this map goes anywhere from showing 10,000 feet above sea level, which would be uh, mountain areas, to below sea level which would be New Orleans and if we take a look we can see the darker shaded area here in Colorado which represents different mountain regions and even when you take a look at New Orleans or the south part of Louisiana you can barely see it and this is another example of a relief map and it uses kind of different graphics and colors to show the different um, the different land elevation the second type of special purpose map that we'll take a look at today is a topographic map. Topographic maps are a lot like relief maps. They show the height or elevation of an area, um, but instead of using colors to do it, they actually use lines. So taking a look at this at the bottom, come on cursor, cursor disappears on me sometimes. Okay, there it is. So let's take a look at the picture at the bottom. The cursor you'll see each line or each band of lines represents approximately 25 feet. So this island looks like it's a, you know, this island is approximately 125 feet tall. So, and what you see from a topographic map, um, you see the different contour lines and they show the shape and elevation of an area. But also what you'll notice with the topographic map is they show you that the closer together lines are like for example here that indicates a more steep terrain okay 
Wait, come on, cursor, come back. Close, all right, there you are. Close lines that are closer together indicate a more steep terrain. Lines that are further apart, like the example of this picture at the bottom, they indicate a more flat terrain. The third type of um, special purpose map we'll take a look at are economic activity maps. Now, these are maps that basically show the, the economy of an area, how the land is used, whether or not the people spend more than, for example, whether or not the people um, earn their money by fishing or hunting or the petroleum industry, which is what we um, earn the Ascension Parish would be if we used our special purpose political activity map of this area would be a lot of the petroleum industry. And they just show the type of economic activities or resources that are prominent or dominant in a given area okay that is not an economic map all right bad slide this is an economic activity map this was another example of a topographic map economic activity map so take by taking a look at this economic activity map we'll see the dominant industries in this area taking a look at the key are meat processing milk processing sugar refining beverages shrimp processing construction materials planning uh tanning tanning Okay, that is the dominant. I don't know how you can manufacture tans, but okay. Um, now, agriculture. The dominant agriculture in the area are bananas, coffee, sugar canes, cattle. And this is reflected when you see the different graphs here. You see, for example, in the city of Cologne, these are the major industries in the city of Cologne, in the city of Panama. Uh, this is not the city of Panama. This is the, this word starts with a V, and I cannot pronounce it, but... You get the point. This is the dominant areas in the city that starts with the V and whose name I cannot pronounce. The fourth type of special purpose map we'll take a look at are population density maps. And what population density maps reflect are the population of an area normally by per square foot or square mile. And the way that cartographers and map makers get this information, they would take a census, which I think we took about two years ago. They'll take the census, and for example, if we were trying to find the number of people that lived in per square kilometer or mile in Gonzales, we would find out the number of people that lived in Gonzales. Then we would then divide that number by the number of square miles that we had in Gonzales, and that would give us the number of people per square mile, and that would allow us to chart it on the map. Taking a look at this, let's take a look at the bottom where the cursor is before it disappears again. And we'll see that the darker colors, the purple colors, reflect the areas with the highest population. What I want you to notice or take note of is that the United States, the majority of the United States, very, very lightly populated. We have very, very few dark red or purple colors. I'm not sure if we have any purple colors. We have some red, but not a lot of purple. China, I'm sorry, Southeast Asia, China. A lot of purple in these areas. Europe, you see splatterings of purple with um, a lot of dark red. What that means is that those areas are more highly populated than, than we are in the United States. This map reflects, it's just kind of a close-up of the other one. It shows the areas of the United States, the darker areas, the darker shaded areas represent more densely populated areas, and the lighter shaded ones represent lightly shaded areas. We'll see that the majority of the United States is lightly populated, especially in comparison to the rest of the world. The majority of our population of this country um, is a lot in South California, Southern California, Northern California, a little bit on the Canadian border, a lot in the East Coast, a little bit in the Midwest, and that Chicago, Detroit, Wisconsin area, uh, Texas, I'm sorry, not Texas, a lot in Florida, and a little bit in Texas. But the majority of our country, based on this map, is very, very lightly populated. Okay, this brings us to the end of this particular section. So we'll pick it up on part two, and we'll finish it up there. So I know this is only halfway through your notes, guys. Do not panic. Part two should be on Blackboard.